Hi everyone, welcome to episode number six in my beginner scripting series. And in this video, we're going to look at instance.new. So it's called instancing and it allows us to create parts and other objects, not just parts, any object in Roblox Studio, we can create them in a script using a function called instance.new. But before we get into that, I just need to tell you about class names. So objects in Roblox Studio, there's loads of different objects. Okay, if we just click on the, the little plus icon here, we have a list of all of the different objects in the game. And there's a lot of them. Okay, we've got things such as the values, we've got sounds, we've got scripts, we've got lights, uh, body movers, UI, uh, UI stuff, and we've got a part. So I've inserted a part here and we can call this part whatever we like. So we could call it um, brick. We could call it hello. We could call it Alvin blocks. But all of these parts, they are still parts. They may be named differently, but they are still parts. And that is where class name comes into the showcase. Because if we have a look at this property called class name, we can't change it. We cannot change the class name because it is fixed. It's locked because Roblox decides the class name of different objects in Roblox Studio. But we can name these parts differently, but they will always have the same class name because it tells us what type of object um, the objects are. So in this case, these are parts. Their class name is parts. And, and the class name is usually the default name of an object. So if I was to insert a decal, then the name of the part uh, of the name of the decal is decal, but its class name is also decal. But when we change the name of the decal, the class name doesn't change. So class name, it tells us the uh, or, uh, the original name of the object, and it tells us what it actually is if it's named differently. You'll see that the spawn location has its own class name. Any object in Roblox has a class name, and it tells us, uh, let's have a look, let's hover over, does it say anything? Yes, it says the string name of this instance's most derived class. So it's the base class. It is the base identifier of objects in Roblox. And we can also call them instances. And that's why we say instance.new because we're creating a new object, a new instance using a script. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go into a script here, which I've put into server script service. And it's very simple. All we need to do is say instance.new and you'll see here that it does uh, show that we need to provide a string value for the name of the of the part. So we need to give that class name to this function. We need to tell it which object we want to insert. So that's why we use the class name. So we say instance.new and we'll put in that class name of part. And it's also saying it wants an instance for the parent. Now you can set the parent of this object, this new instance from this function. So we could say game.workspace and close it off like that. And that will insert a part into the workspace. But this is actually not recommended. Do not do this, okay? You, you never ever want to parent an object uh, straight from the function. So never ever put the parent inside this function. You literally only just want to have the class name of the part. And I'll explain why later on, but it's very bad practice if you set the parent within this argument here. So if, if you set the parent argument in the function, it's very bad um, for for reasons to do with optimization and performance. So we'll get onto that later on. But this will create a new part in the game world. The only problem is we haven't been able to tell the script um, where to put it. And that's because obviously I've just said we've, we, there's a performance issue there. But what we can do is we can set this to a variable. So let's just give an, a new variable. We'll call it my part. And the function instance.new, it's built into Roblox. So it will create this object and it will return it. So the uh, value of my part will be the, the part which we just created because it's going to uh, create the new object and it's going to send it back uh, it's going to set it to this variable. So we will be able to reference it later on. So now that we've done that, we can set some properties. So for example, we could set the transparency of my part. So just like any other object that we reference, since we now have a reference to this part, which we've just created, we can set its properties. So 
So we could make it semi-transparent, for example. Um, we could uh, make it anchored. And when once you finally set all of the properties that you want, okay, then you parent the object. So we haven't told the script where we want it to be parented, where we want it to, to be. And to do that, we will just say my part dot parent equals game dot workspace. Now, the reason we're doing this last, it's very, it's recommended to always set the parent of an instance last of all. The last thing that you do after you've set all of the properties that you want to set, then parent it to wherever you want. And it just from a, a performance perspective, it is much better to set the properties of the part uh, before you parent it. And I'm not going to go into why, uh, because it's to do with the performance and it just is a, it's a slightly better than setting the, the parent instance in the instance.new function. So just one thing to remember, always set the parent property last. And if you don't set a parent property, well, you're not going to, you're not going to see your part. It's not going to be spawned in the game world because the script doesn't know where to put it. If we have a look here, you can see our part is nowhere to be seen. We've got the three which we which we manually generated, but the one which came from our script isn't there. So what we'll do is we'll say my part dot parent equals game dot workspace, and we click on run, and it should insert the part into the game. Let's have a look in the workspace, and there we go. We have a part, and let's see where is it. Let's click on F on the keyboard, and there it is. It's hiding just under the spawn location there. So we can also set its position. And to do that, we can set a vector three value. So my part dot position equals vector three dot new. And we can set some coordinates in the game world. So for example, we could put it in this position over here. So 53.422, 0.5, 32.139. Let's just put this in our vector three value. We'll learn a bit more about positions in a future video. So don't worry too much about this if you don't understand it. And let's click on run. And you can see our part, its position property was set to this value here. So that's how you generate new objects from a script. We use the instance.new function and we can put any class name in here. It doesn't just have to be a part. We could insert anything. Let's have a look at what we could insert here. We could insert a particle emitter and I'm just going to remove these properties and I'm going to change the name of the variable so we don't get confused. So I'm just going to call it my PE for particle emitter. And we can say my PE dot parent equals game dot workspace dot hello, because we've already got a brick in here in the workspace. So let's click on run and our particle emitter should be inserted into the hello part. And it is. So as soon as the game starts running, our script here executes, it instances in a new particle emitter. And then that is set as the value of this variable. And then since we now have it set as a variable, we can reference it. And that's why we set it as a variable. If we didn't set it as a variable, then we don't have a way of being able to keep a reference to this particle emitter because we haven't set the returned value from this function, which creates the object and will return the object. We haven't set it to anything. So we can't say later on particle emitter um, dot enabled equals false. We can't set any of its properties because we don't have a reference to it. So what we can do is we can set it as a variable like this, and then we can set its properties. So that's why we set it as a variable because a variable lets us hold data, which we can use later on. And we can set the enabled property to false. And if we look in our part, um, doo -doo -doo, we have an error. Let's see what's happened. Oh, we didn't parent it. There we go. So we didn't parent the particle emitter. So it didn't get placed anywhere in the game world. It didn't know where to put it. So that's why you should parent your um, instances from the script. Otherwise, they're not going to be placed anywhere in the game. The game won't know where to put it. All right, before we finish, let me just give you a quick reason as to why the second parameter of the instance.new function, which I mentioned earlier, is a bad practice. Uh, first of all, it's deprecated. So Roblox doesn't support it anymore and they recommend uh, not to use it. But the reason why is because if we were to set the parent of the object first, then the particle emitter is immediately going to be placed into the game world. So let's just imagine that we, we run the code and we get to line one and the particle emitter is inserted. Now it's much more costly for the game 
to look up the particle emitter every time we want to change something. So if we want to change the enabled property, well, we have to firstly look up the particle emitter in the game and we set the property to false. And then it has to replicate to all of the clients in the game. So all of the players that are connected, we have to send this change to them all. So we have to tell all of the connected players that we've changed the enabled property to false. And so we'll have to look it up and set that property to false. So everyone connected to the game, all of their uh, clients will automatically have to do this. So the change will have to be replicated. And so for every single property that we change after we've parented it, we have to go and replicate it again. And that is, will take much more time than if we just didn't parent it to begin with. And then we set the properties that we wanted. And then afterwards, if we were to go and pa parent it to the workspace, well, because we already set the properties, we only have to replicate the particle emitter to all of the other clients in the game once. Because if we've set the properties, then it's how we want it to be. We don't have to change anything else. And we can just send the one particle emitter to all of the clients in the game. And then there won't be any more um, data having to be sent over the network about other properties which have to be changed because they're already there. They're already set in the particle emitter and we're only parenting it. We're only putting it in the game and replicating it to all of the different players when we've set the properties that we want and it's good to go. So. If you don't understand that, don't worry too much about it. What you just need to know is it is bad practice to use this second parent argument. It is supported, but don't use it because I never use it and most programmers don't use it nowadays in Roblox. We just set the parent property once we have, um, sorry, we set the parent property once we've set all the other uh, properties which we want, okay? So that was a quick tutorial on how to use instancing, instance.new, in Roblox to generate parts. You can set it as a variable um, so that you can keep track of your objects and change properties in the future. And uh, it's a very, very useful function. You'll be using it all the time in scripting. So thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.